Hello, and thanks for watching. My name is Todd Baginski. I'm a Microsoft MVP and a partner in the CTO at Canvas. My team is working with Microsoft right now to create 10 different sample apps for Power Apps that you can use as app templates to ramp up on Power Apps in your organization. The first one that we've created is called the Out of Office Power App. And you can see right here on the web.powerapps.com, when you go to the home page, it's listed as one of the sample applications you can create. If you click the Make This App button, right like this, it'll start standing up the app in your Power Apps environment so you can use it. That process takes a little bit of time. Um, so first it's going to download everything to your Power Apps environment and then it's going to load it up in the editor so you can actually deploy this to your own environment and release it to your own users. In this video, what I'm going to do is give you a walkthrough of the functionality that you'll find within this Power App. So here you can see the app loading, and it's already pulled some items from my Outlook calendar here. So the basic premise behind this app is that it allows you to look at upcoming dates in your calendar that are longer than four hours long. And if you have those, you can select from the list at the bottom and create an out of office to tie it to that long event. Or you can just tie it to any event in your calendar or without an event in your calendar by just hitting the create new button. Under the hood, this app works with a couple different data sources in Office 365. Here you can see I have the Office 365 connector as well as the Office 365 users connector. These are used to get information about the current user and their Outlook calendar and to also set their out of office message or to turn it off. It also allows you to send email to people to let them know you're going to be out of office and you can also decline conflicting events. So what I'm going to do now is pretty much walk you through the app from an end user point of view and show you how it works. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to click on the play button here to launch it. Once I've launched it, I'm just going to go into full screen mode here so we can see the power app a little bit bigger. The first thing you'll notice is it's pulling my email address. It's using the Office 365 Users Connector to get the email address for the current user using the application. The next thing you'll notice is that it has dates from my calendar for events that are long events that might be something that I need to set an out of office for. If you have just a regular meeting that's a half hour, an hour and a half, or a short meeting like that, it's not going to show up in this list because it's just not a meeting that you would need to set an out of office for. If I open up my Outlook calendar, here we can see this event that's conflicting that occurs tomorrow because I'm recording this on the second. You also notice I put in an event that conflicts with it right here called Code Review. So that's how I see the Primus concert here in my list. So I'm going to say, yes, I'd like to create an out of office while I'm at the Primus concert. It's going to pull in the information from Outlook using the Office 365 connector for when this meeting starts and when it ends. It also pulls in the title from that meeting invite. Hit Next, and here I select what type of event this is. The reason we walk through the wizard is because we're actually going to build up the out of office message that will be put into Outlook when you finish this little wizard. So I'm going to say that's a personal event here. You'll notice the icon and the top changes as I click on each one of these items. Next, what level of email access am I going to have? Well, Les Claypool and the boys are going to be loud, so I'm definitely not going to be watching my phone or hearing it make any noise, so I'm going to say no access. Who should we contact while I'm out? It automatically grabs your manager from Active Directory and populates them in this box right here. If you'd like someone else to be contacted, you can type their information here as well. This is an autocomplete, which is going to use the Office 365 Users Connector to look up users in your Active Directory. So I could look at myself, for instance. 
type in Todd and it'll autocomplete. I have a couple different accounts in our directory because one of them is an external account. So I can select myself and contact Todd regarding anything. Then hit next. Now you can see we basically took the information from that wizard and we built it up such that it's here inside of your message. So you can see I'll be on personal leave because we selected personal leave from the dates associated with the calendar invite with no access to email because that's also what I selected in the wizard there. Then here is who I told it to contact. It pulled their email address under the hood using the Office 365 users connector regarding anything. That's what I typed in right there. And then it just puts another sentence and a little bit more here on the end and signs it with the current user's name. So this is who I want to contact inside my org. I could also say, well, here's the message I want for outside my org. By default, we build them up both the same, but you're free to edit these any way you see fit. So I could just make that A, a lowercase a here to show you the difference in a bit. When I go to save it, we actually call the connector to communicate with Outlook under the hood and set the out of office inside of Outlook. You'll also notice that the app now indicates that you have an out of office response that has been set. I can turn it off simply by clicking this button right here, or I can edit it and step through the same wizard if I click the little pencil icon. You'll also notice that I have one conflicting event that it detected. We saw that back in my calendar where I made that code review. Let's bounce over to Outlook now and take a look at what the out of office event looks like. Bringing Outlook back up, I will go take a look at my automatic replies. And here I can see the exact same message that we just sent from the Power App is now here inside of Outlook. You'll also notice it's even smart enough to dial it in to the exact times that I'm going to be out of office. So it won't send this message once it expires, even if I forget to turn it off. Remember how I had a capital A for inside my organization? Here you can see it. And in outside my organization, there's the lowercase a that I have as well. I also talked about the conflicting event I had. Let me show that to you one more time. If I head back to the calendar, I have this conflicting event called code review with this time frame that I set for out of office. I can now come back to the app and I can actually clear my calendar out and say, which meetings would you like to decline? I can select the code review here. If there's more than one, I can just hit a checkbox and it'll select all of them. And I hit clear one conflict. What we've now done is going to actually decline that meeting in Outlook so it will disappear from my calendar if I created it or if I didn't create it, it'll notify the person who created it that I'm not going to be at their meeting. So now if I come back to Outlook and take a look at it, I can see it's definitely disappeared from my calendar because before it was shown to the right as a conflicting event at the same time. So that's a nice little handy piece of functionality as well. The final thing I can do is I can send calendar invites. These calendar invites, basically besides setting my out of office message in Outlook, will create a calendar invite to notify people that I will be out of the office at this time. This can be especially helpful if you've chosen to create one, but you didn't create it based on an event that was already on your calendar. We fill the same information before that we had, otherwise you can type it in. And here it will go through and it's going to do another query to the Outlook connector, or pardon me, the Office 365 users connector. And it's going to look up the people I work with most often in my organization and recommend that I send them this calendar invite. So I'm just going to send this one right now, just to Tim for demo's sake and delete all the other users here. And I'm also going to add myself. Actually, I can just delete Tim so he doesn't even get bothered with this demo. So now I've made a calendar invite 
that's going to show as free, but it lets people know I'm going to be out of the office. I can go and send that now. The calendar invite has been sent and I can go back to Outlook to check it out. Here I can open the calendar event and see that it was created and sent to myself and it had the same information in there. Had you chose to send this to other people, they would all be on the two line as well as your uh, yourself. You don't show up on the two line um, when you are the one who creates it and just sends it to yourself. So as you can see, there's a good amount of functionality in this app. And I also have the ability, as I mentioned earlier, I can simply turn my out of office off and that will then clear that from Outlook as well. So now I can head over to Outlook and check that out. And here I can see my out of office is now turned off and the last messages that I had and the time is still stored inside of there. So that's a little tour of the I'm out out of office app that you can use for power apps. Check out the other videos that I have that walk through the code underneath the hood and how this app was implemented. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the app.